Uh, call the meeting to order. It's um, uh, 6.50. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda? Kari. Yeah, so we don't have the town meeting minutes to consider tonight. And also, okay. we don't need NEMREC contracts this year because uh, we are not employing them for payroll services or we're going to need, be needing a bulk hours contract. So there are no contracts to sign. Oh, okay. I wondered why there weren't any in the in the. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. I've got clarity today. Okay, thanks. Anything I have a question about the town meeting minutes. Why are you not having them tonight? Oh, I didn't know they were ready. Are they, did, aren't you the town minute? Did yeah. you take the minutes? Yeah, and I've been in touch so you with- You sent them to me, but you told me you were gonna send them to the select oh. board. I got them and they're all done. I guess I just didn't <laughs> show them to you. We haven't seen them. Yeah, all oh, right. Okay. I think you want to pass them on until you said they were going to be passed okay. on. So I think if, we're both waiting. If you would send them to, to uh, Kari or Barbara, I guess, and Barbara will we'll get them on. We'll get them in I'm the folder sorry. for next time. Good. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, they've been here for a couple weeks. But. So we're not going to do the March 5th town meeting minutes, but we are going to do the minutes March 11th. Anybody got any changes or additions or? Nope. Would somebody like to move? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Yeah. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, board orders coming around here. I'll sign my order there. Five cents. Um, would anybody like to move those? Or does anybody have any questions on them? No. Okay, anybody is, want to move them? Don't move. Is, um, oh, yes, is Donnie? Is just four of you, or is no, Donnie here? Donnie is here. Donnie is here. He's, put your name on your phone, Donnie. Nope, there he is. Did he vote for the minutes? I honestly don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. You did it successfully once. <laughs> I can do it. Oh, you can do it? Okay. I think I did it last time. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, well let's, let's move here. on. Um, so who's moved to sign the board orders? I don't. Um, Anna's moved. Is there a second? Jordan seconds. Second. Jordan and Donnie second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 So they're going around. Um, why do we have to certify the election of the chair and the vice chair? I've never done that before. Is this something new? The statute say you have to do it. I will leave all the things you are Who are we to certifying? Who are we certifying oh, is there more than one of those? Who, what, what happens it's with this stuff? It's supposed to be in the records, in the clerk's records. It's just in your, for your records. OK. And we have to move to certify them? Fine. You have to certify them. Fine. And we have to sign them. Yes, okay. I work. Work. You have to sign them. Would somebody like to move that we certified that I'm the chair and Jordan's the vice chair? So <laughs> moved. Thank you. Second. It should say that Rose is the clerk also. It does not. Okay. Yeah, we removed that. It doesn't matter. You're still supposed to. Yeah. Certify the file in the town office. Is that happening? Yep. Is it happening? And can I make that? And, oh, thanks. And Jordan seconded. Jordan seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. So I've gotten a copy here. This is. A, I wish she's got. There's a copy in the back. Copy that already has a signature. How many? We just need the one. Yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. So so the back then. Um. Are we doing the CAI? Uh, yeah, so the updated today. contracts coming around, remember the date was widely incorrect last yeah. time. And also, we have now warned the payment, which will be this initial setup fee, will be coming out of the planning and reserve fund. So that's been warned. It's 3475 for the setup fee, and then it comes July when the budget starts, we will pay the annual. You mean it's been warned to put this agenda? Yes. Okay, so now we have to officially vote it? And Please. sign it. Okay. Would somebody like to move that? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Okay. So here. Oh, I think I signed a different one. Oh, do we? I think it's a different copy. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have to write all copies. Just sign all. Okay. Um, now, we're accepting Sandra's resignation, although she hasn't officially tendered one, but we know that she is um, doing that. So very sadly, we're letting Sandra go, and we're appointing Kari as treasurer. Would somebody like to move that one? 
Is that moved? It's been moved by Anne. Seconded. And seconded by Jordan. All in favor? Aye. Congrat Aye. Congratulations, Gary. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we need to re sign the Municipal Climate Recovery Fund loan because the last, uh, because Kari's now the treasurer. So we and the closing's on Thursday. And so we're closing they... when he's the treasurer. So is that coming around? That's this one, okay. I believe. Hope so you that Vermont, Vermont just, Bond Bank. You already, you already we're just signing it, just it so we don't. Again. We already moved it. Okay. Um. Um, and we don't have to do the Nemrick contract. So we're up to public comment. Any public <laughs> want to comment? I have public. Oh. No, I have comment. Okay. <laughs> I just want to um, have the opportunity to speak when it gets to um, gravel and the overage and sandy gravel. I told Ann a few months ago that I hate being a pain in the ass about the generator, and she told me, no, you don't. <laughs> so I can't hide under that. But there are certain steps that have to be taken to get the generator moved, and I think everybody agrees it needs to be moved. Um, but we're sort of stuck. Um, so I, I, I believe there's a contract somewhere in the possession of the select board from Brookfield Services to move the generator. Um, and I would ask that the select board execute that, comment, that contract um, and get the generator moved by the spring. Kari, can you look into that and we can look at it at the next meeting? I do not remember a contract to move the generator. Does anybody remember that? I, I think I remember seeing a draft of one or a proposal. I don't know if it was a contract. And Nick may have an idea. Of we yeah. tabled it for, I think, I think till spring. Well, we tabled the, the, the actual doing of it until spring. Right. And I didn't remember there was a contract. But Carl, why don't you look into that? I, I can look into that. And and look. If you can't find it, check in with Nick M1. He yeah. probably has. Yeah, maybe the second place I go. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there also an issue of having the, what's the name of the group that oversees the, the, the aesthetics the of this building? Right. Where, where, didn't they have to weigh in or, or no? They did, they did. They did, okay. Yes, and they came up with a plan, right? Scott, you were involved in that. Yes, the, the design advisory board is responsible for the, the Kent's Corner Historic District, and this is part of that district. Okay. They have said that it definitely should be moved. Um, and they're, they're, they made a clear recommendation which we can. It, it, does that recommendation match what the quote or the contract specified? I don't know. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll take that yeah. up next time. It's not a, it's, it's, it's like moving it back four feet and to the left four feet and then. Yeah, we don't want to move it again. <laughs> well, Second time's the charm, right? Can I just make a quick comment? Um, you just need to make sure that they know the roads are posted, so if they bring a heavier truck with a boom on it or something, they can't do it until it's after mud season. Yeah. The roads are posted. Okay. Something Thank I think. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, is Toby Talbot with us? Not yet. No. Toby is not on the agenda for five minutes. Um, well then, let's let's uh, jump to the next one. We'll put Toby aside for now because I see Andy at least is here, and and uh, this is the WEC permit application. Oh, I know yes. I know WEC wanted to be on the Zoom for this conversation because they emailed me today for the Zoom link because they, they said they wanted to be on. They okay. said they'll be here in any minute. So. Okay, well, we'll put that one aside for the moment. Ed. And uh, how about the delinquent tax issue? Sandra is She's not here, but I can speak to it. So she, okay. Sandra made this recommendation. She's been working with the owners for quite some time, since since um, sometime in 2022. Um, there's currently owed as $14,157.34. Um, there's been an effort to create repayment plans uh, and no payment has been made since September of 2022. Uh, and Sandra gave the owners uh, 
final deadline of February 29th to make a payment, and they, they did not do that or contact her. And Sandra explained to us at the last meeting that what will happen if we vote to move forward is it will go to our town attorney, who is Gloria Rice, and um, at that point she'll take it to court and do whatever needs to be done. Is that right? right? It's out of our hands at that point. It yeah. becomes a, a, a process okay. that the attorney runs. Okay. Would somebody, is there any discussion on that or are there any questions? Would somebody like to move for collection of parcel number 151322? Or what do we move for to send it to our town? To, 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 to send it to collections. Send it to collections. So moved. Second. Jordan moves and seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. And now I see Toby's here. So, yeah. okay. Wow, you guys are ahead. <laughs> Just by a couple of minutes. Never talk about a no hitter. <laughs> Toby, tell us what's happening with FEMA. Um, sure. So I sent you that spreadsheet. Yep. Um, um, and this is the status of these, what they call projects. So every road and every cost that we incurred ended up getting a project assigned. So each project in a lot of the larger roads have an individual road. Some of the projects um, were minor. Each road was a minor number. So they, the, the last three on the list are actually various roads all gathered together. Um, so, with many hours of work by Scott and Charlotte and myself, um, essentially we collected all the data, scanned it all into the computer, moved it up to the portal. It's, it's all done. You're finished almost, with scanning. Well, almost all of the oh. almost all of the stuff that we need to do has been sent to. Wow, it's That's incredible, awesome. you guys. Six wow. hours of stuff to do. But... Right. It's for, for minor roads. So, so the large projects I sort of took on, and essentially the total of all the large projects is over a million dollars. All of that stuff has been submitted to FEMA. Um, and if, if we look at the list here, the first, two, the first two on the list are what they call obligated. That means FEMA has completely approved those. So the first one is Curtis Pond. The second one is Moscow Woods. So we've actually received the payment from the state for um, Curtis Pond. Um, and that actually is only 75%. It's actually going to be 100%, so there'll be more funds coming on that particular item. Um, Moscow Woods um, has been approved for $333,000. Um, and that's in the process now of the last stages of signing paperwork and then getting a check sent to the town. I just received um, this morning, Bliss Pond Road has been um, accepted for 147,000. Um, so that project will then essentially be just paperwork and turn around. Wow. So that second grouping are roads that are complete, uh, totally submitted to FEMA, waiting for final, um, final questions and approvals. So essentially that gets us to almost a million dollars when those are approved, and they're essentially they're complete. Um, and all the rest, um, single roads um, further down, some of them are still being processed through the Vermont FEMA office that we're dealing with our project manager. Um, and they're very close to being sent to the next stage. And the last three are these various roads, and that's what Scott and Charlotte are working on, and that's close to $150,000, but that's still not complete to, to FEMA from us at this point. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not aware of the, the fact that, so supposedly I'm working on the assumption that FEMA is paying 75%. I've heard that they may pay 90%. I don't know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. But right now, these numbers are, are calculated at 75% from FEMA, 12.5% from the state, and then if the state gets us to 90%, that's so essentially at 87.5%, it's 1.2 million, at, um, and at 90%, it's 1. Point, I can't read it because I had an eye checkup today and my eyes are dying, <laughs> so I can't, I can't read, even if I could, I can't read the number, but anyways. Um, 
So that essentially the town is on the hook for about $120,000 out of pocket. Amazing. Um, and yeah. there's also a number down here that says that the town labor that, that has been submitted to FEMA is $42,000. And the equipment that we, um, that we are charging for for the use on, on these projects is over 100000 That's money that essentially we're getting reimbursed for the forty thousand we've already paid out of our budget for the most part, except for overtime that was calculated out as a FEMA expense. Um, and the total uh, the total amount of materials that have been put into all the roads is over two hundred thousand dollars. Mm. Again, which we're all going to get reimbursed for by by FEMA at seventy five percent. Maybe Volunteer hours. Yeah, <laughs> and essentially I'll get paid, everything you paid me will get reimbursed and then there'll be some mm -hmm. money for volunteer time as well mm -hmm. that comes back to the town. So that's where we're at at this point. It's pretty much getting to the, we've pretty much done everything we need to do on our part for the most part and it's just waiting for FEMA. And so essentially probably within a month or so a significant amount of the million dollars will be in our back in our coffers. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's been a lot of work. Toby has been magnificent, just incredible. And the, the people from FEMA say they wish they had more people like Toby. <laughs> so we, we're, no, we're I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not replaceable. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely not. We're among the first to be getting all these. I, I don't know. I have no idea what we're at. They don't, they don't tell us. First step uh, or not. Yeah. And it's, it's sort of, so essentially there's a, there's a program manager that we're dealing with directly, and she funnels everything into her um, group in Burlington that's the state version of the FEMA, they're all there and they look over everything before, and then it goes to this um, um, FEMA office that's somewhere in Washington or somewhere where they go over it all over again and nitpick everything. You occasionally get four or five extra questions that haven't been answered. I mean, one thing that I didn't understand is they wanted to know the GPS of the pits where all the gravel came from. And no one ever told me that at the beginning, but this environmental group wants that information. So. Those questions came in because I didn't realize we had to offer that. Um, so we're answering those questions. There's also what they call mitigation. So anytime we upsized a culvert or particularly like on Singleton Road where we went from a three inch, three foot culvert to a 12 foot culvert, it has to go through what they call mitigation, essentially proving why we needed to upgrade what we did. And, and there's different monies that go to pay that. Um, so there have been some, not holdups, but there's questions raised by mitigation that I didn't answer in the first pass because mm -hmm. they were not, they're not appropriate. Um, so for the most part, it's uh, pretty much done, hopefully, um, it's from the, we're done the downslope. So. Can I ask, um, in the cases where we fully rebuilt a road, like on Moscow Woods or something, was it built to the sort of the top standard that we would have wanted? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so everything was returned back to, to the, the state it was in when before the flood. In fact, sometimes a little better. Or better. Yeah. Right. Because um, Mother Nature took all that bad stuff out and we put all the good stuff back mm -hmm. for the most part. Can I ask a terrifying question? Sure. Um, so I, with, uh, with other kind of flood insurance and, and FEMA reimbursements um, in like the private sector, I guess, uh, the fear is that um, you'll get it covered once, but you may not uh, get it covered again. Has there been any kind of indication as to like whether or not um, any, any of these expenses would be covered in the future if they were to happen again, um, if there weren't mitigation efforts or? Um. So, a road that washes out just because of a flood, it, there's no mitigation involved right. in that. I mean, essentially, if you restore it to, to the shape it was in beforehand, if you didn't pay attention to a hazard that you knew was happening when you put it back together, so essentially Singleton Road is a case in point. It was a three-foot culvert that was not designed to handle a 50-foot flood. 
So when we put it back, we actually met that hazard, future hazard mitigation by putting a larger culvert in. And that was dictated by the state, um, the state hydrology people that we had that evaluated. Most of the other places that we did anything, um, the only changes were, so some of our cross culverts that washed out were 15 inch. Our, our town and state standard now is 18. So we actually upgraded to that standard. Okay. So there's nothing really out there that we could do any differently as far as hazard mitigation yeah. goes. Um, you know, when, when whatever happened at Bliss Pond and it washed the road out down to ledge, is right. may happen again, but there's no mitigation uh, procedure. And, you know, we've identified some areas where um, a larger culvert would have helped up there, but that wasn't washed out. It just overtopped and then went down the road. So essentially, in the future, I will put in for um, a hazard mitigation of that culvert, make it larger so that it won't happen again. But that's not something that was done. In, in, so FEMA wants you to put it back as it was. That's what FEMA pays you for. Um, and if it happens again, bad on us that we didn't take measures and, and there's lots of money for hazard prevention. Mm. In fact, um, we're dealing with replacing this culvert right. here, and there's state uh, hazard mitigation monies available. I'm going to apply for that to pay for this. Nice. Um, so and anywhere we can actually find the funds for hazard mitigation, we will. And it's been my um, policy over the past few years is that all the large culverts in town have been, with grants, have been upsized to a 50 or 100 year flood standard. Um, so essentially, m almost every culvert in town is, uh, is rated at, the, at its best, the best state. Yeah, awesome. Other thank questions you. for Toby? Yeah. Well, thank goodness we had you guys. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a lot of work. What a, what a t it has, thank you so much. I think I have much. over 200 plus hours. Uh, well, I believe it. And some of it was really tedious, particularly the all work that Scott um, and Charlotte were doing. Yeah, so, well, essentially every road had, uh, luckily for me, that I had the road crew keep track of their hours and their machinery and their materials. But then every slip that came with a truck full of gravel had to be accounted for and reported. And every invoice from the pits and every check sent to the pits all had to be scanned for every road. <clears throat> and then there was GPS and length, width, and depth of the damage, and uh, photographs. And a lot of data had to be submitted in order to qualify. I was over in the garage a couple of times when the guys were coming in from work and saying, and now we have to sit here for an hour and do paperwork, and they were really yeah. not happy yeah. about it. Well, so. I was as happy as could be to have all that paper. Yeah, yeah. It made, yeah. I know. They did, the it. they did it. Uh, yeah, and we yeah. know now the depth and a lot of those things that they weren't initially doing. Right. So, so future and, and again, again, some of that was they didn't tell me that I needed to have, you know, the length of the scour and the depth of it. And it all had to be done at the, at the end because they compared to what we put into the road versus what was the damage. And if they had told me that at the beginning, before it snowed and all that other thing, it would have been much easier. So a lot of it was difficult to um, recreate. But um, we're pretty successful with everything at this point. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you. you. Uh, was there was there anything else through the process, or is it maybe too soon uh, to think of like that would make it easier? Um, should we need to be documenting these things in the future? Well, uh, having had to do FEMA reimbursements and state reimbursements right. for projects, I have a history of. Oh, you need to take pictures, you need to record it. If you didn't write it down, you didn't do it. Right. And so essentially, I stepped into the town garage immediately and said, okay, here's a form, everybody, every day, you gotta put your hours in, you gotta put your machine in, you gotta put your materials in. And some of it was cryptic, some of it I had to go back to the guys and say, did you really mean this? Or, well, it says four here, does that mean four trucks or four cubic yards. So some of that translation needed to happen. Um, but the fact that every day 
they kept the hours that they were there on, on individual roads made all the difference. And that, that made my job much easier. If I, if I hadn't done that, we'd still be scratching our head For sure. trying to put all this data back together. And I think there's quite a few towns that didn't, weren't as organized and are struggling now. Right. Well, they have to make it up. Hey, Bob, what did you do on July 15th on yeah. Moscow Woods? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And then stick to it. I don't know. So essentially, that documentation made all the difference to make it easier for us. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I think we'll probably get an award for being the best organized town in the state. We'll get a jar full of gravel. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> yeah, we need more than a jar full. Exactly. We need a jar full of time. Um, so I see that um, Mike Meyer is here from WEC. Is there anybody else from WEC we're expecting? Okay. So we're going to move on. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. All right. We're going to move on to um, WEC's request for a permit to work in the highway right of way. You've all had a chance to review that. They'll be putting, the proposal is to put in two utility poles running down Color Hill Road and then underground the wire to the property of Andy Seaman and Sophia um, Amy, uh, which is about, it's a lot, it's about 2,000 feet, isn't it? Underground in a, on our road. So um, how shall we proceed? Where did Mike go? Oh, there he is. Hi. You, hi. Hi. So we're, you need us to give you the permit. Would you like to describe the project for us? We all have it in front of us, just very briefly. Sure, yeah, we're looking for a town highway permit from you. Um, the first part of the project would extend down Collar Hill Road about 580 feet with an overhead line uh, to Worcester Road. And then we're proposing burying a primary underground line within the town highway right away down Worcester Road uh, to, to serve Mr. Seaman, who's applied for power. Okay. Um, and there will be some cutting of trees, which our town uh, tree warden has looked at and says he finds no problem with with any of that and the road crew has looked at the proposal and Kari they have some things they would like to stay can you tell um, yeah their primary concern was the culvert that crosses just about at the property at the curb cut and um, the preference would be to have the power go underneath the culvert and um, and when we met out there there was a discussion of some in some cases they will put a concrete uh, cap on just for added protection in case you ever do need to get in there and dig. And there was a sense that it would be nice to have that at the, at the side of the culvert because that'd be an, an obvious place to do some digging in the future. And then anywhere where it's not at full depth, you know, it was explained to us that they're trying to get down four to five feet into the roadbed. Um, so it's, if it's gonna be less than that, then that concrete would probably be helpful. But other than that, they didn't have any problems. It sounds like it's very similar to the work that was done at Kent Hill, and there haven't been any problems. Questions? Uh, so is this going down down the center of the roadway, or is it going to be off to the One side? side, and I think we were looking at the south, the left-hand side heading towards Worcester. That, there was less trees there. There would be less roots to deal with, easier access. And there's a natural ditch that occurs because it's downhill slope. And so how long how long would that project take? It sounds like it'd be down to one lane, I guess, while it was while it was being performed for a duration of time. Mike, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, I I think the primary underground portion of it, um, going down Worcester Road, could take a work week, um, Monday to Friday, to get that done, and it it could result in closure of the road for a period of a time. Um, fortunately, we have Collar Hill Road uh, that, right. that you can use to get around that work site. Oh, at the site visit, Mike, they said that they could get it down to one lane and they would have flaggers. So now you're saying, but the, so I hadn't heard that. At when the it site crosses visit. the road, they'll have to close it, you know, for that yeah. portion. We'll, we'll definitely keep it 
as short as possible. Um, but my understanding, uh, uh, I'm filling in for Brian, who's on a, a health leave right now. Um, and my understanding was that it would need to be closed for a period of time. Okay. So all the, um, the general conditions on that first page would be incorporated into the permit. Plus, um, we would want to add the, the road crews requests about the concrete cap and, the, and going under the culvert. Does everybody understand where we are with that? No more questions? Would somebody like to move then? The, uh, Andy, do you want to say anything? Oh. I'm sorry, you came here. <laughs> I mean, I questions come up. I mean, it's, it's putting power down the road, you know, yeah. it's really in their hands. <laughs> um, I guess from the town's records, say, it'd be, it'd be good if we had documentation of, of where it is. I, I mean, right now it looks like it, the, some infrastructure could be running on the opposite side of the road that's what that's being discussed and it's kind of crude drawing but you know we had a situation where things were buried under the town right of way uh last year right or we and we came across stuff because there just wasn't adequate documentation of exactly where it was and so if i could add a condition to make sure that the there's documentation of where it is as built. As built. Uh, that would be that would be great. And, and this yeah. would be this is Mike. Uh, we can get you the documentation on the location, but we'll also be about a foot, foot and a half down. We'll be uh, burying a special tape with with like a mylar coating that is easily located with an underground locating device. So anytime work goes on, I'm sure we can help you pinpoint the precise location of, of that wire. Perfect. Great. Okay. Uh, in that case, I think what we need is a motion to approve the permit as proposed with the conditions that Kari talked about that you can give to Rose to incorporate re regarding the concrete cap and going under the culvert. So moved. Jamie moves Second. and seconds. Uh, Donnie, you're with us here? Yep, you're there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Okay, thank you. And thank I you. had a point of clarification. Mm -hmm. It said um, the electrical lines for a new planned multi household development. Uh, is it on or in Worcester? Is it in Callis or is it in Callis. Worcester? It's on the Worcester Road in Callis. In Callis. <laughs> The development's going to be in Callis. Yeah, all the land is in Callis, isn't it? That's right. in, yeah. Yeah. So it's a. It's right now we're building our single family home, but the plan is to. And we have some um, basic conceptual plans almost done, but to come to the DRB and, and discuss it. But it'll be a small community. You know, trying to figure out how to do it in a way that allows lower middle income people all to access it and so on. So, but we have some work to do so. Good. Welcome to Callis. <laughs> so, Kari, you will do that or have someone do it up for us and we'll sign it at the next meeting? Or did they? You know, it's, yeah, I think that it's a pretty basic form. It's just that we have to put those conditions in. You want to put in. the conditions in? Okay. Um, or uh, I guess, um, hmm, looks like one person only needs to sign, so you could authorize me to do it, I guess. Yeah, let me do that, and yeah. then you can swing by. Okay, so I'll ask for a motion to authorize me to sign the permit once Kari's put the, had the conditions put in. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Aye. thank you. Okay. <laughs> when are you going to build? Uh, whenever the roads aren't posted. <laughs> 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 Soon. <laughs> it's coming. May, May 10th, <laughs> and we'll see. Yeah, that's the goal. Fantastic. May, May there. Great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. The next item on the agenda is a discussion about road condition communications, and I'm going to turn it over to Anne, who requested this item. Whether did you have things you wanted? To 
Well, the one thing I wanted to say is it's the time of year where the Agency of Transportation asks select boards to certify that we have road standards, that we are in compliance with our road standards, and that the standards meet or exceed the state standards. So um, I think we need to do a little bit of um, study education, stealth education. Well, actually, you, you did this last year, so you're, you're ahead of me. Um, but anyway, I put the standards in the April 8th folder. I'm just asking to brush up on that, be prepared to have a discussion about that at the next meeting. Okay. I think Toby walked us through that last year. Did he? I, uh, that's my memory. Uh, I asked him to do it again. Good. <laughs> and he was going to okay. do a, an analysis to show you where, where yeah. how we compare to the state standards. Okay. And that, that would be very helpful for me. And there's a lot of history and feelings in town about that. We yeah. could have some attendance at yeah. that meeting. But it's part of the process, getting that certification of compliance is part of the process for getting grants. So. Okay, so with communication, as thinking it would be helpful, like in the future, we've had three mud seasons, being more proactive and perhaps the emergency management team can also be a part of this of putting out some proactive messaging about what what season is like for people that aren't accustomed to it um, and planning for, for safety and awareness that sometimes you can't get down the road and sometimes they can't work on the road because if they bring the trucks on, they're going to destroy the road leading to the place that's a problem and make the rest of the road a problem. Um, I think when we get to better weather, we have a better idea of what we're doing. Uh, if we could have a model somewhat, Cabot has like a weekly update. Mm -hmm. So when we know and have the capacity to have a pretty good idea of where we're gonna be, be able to say, okay, next week we're gonna be tackling this and that, you know, you'll see the mowers out, whatever, whatever. Um, just to kind of be ahead and that might help with, you know, obviously some people and everyone has a right to say whatever they're feeling about the roads, but um, try to have as much awareness, and particularly during mud season and snowstorm safety, because we did have that woman over in Middlesex who nearly died a couple mud seasons ago when her car got stuck, so. Um, you did that when you were road commissioner. Sometimes you would say, this week we're gonna be out here yeah, yeah, I tried to update nice. like during the flood. Yeah, like where so they're going to be working. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, that's that. what I'm talking about. You know, in the winter it's kind of hard in mud season because you don't know what you're going to be doing because you'll have a plan and then you'll discover the beavers are back on Gray Road and flooding. <laughs> so you're going to go deal with that. Um, but in the summer, hopefully, well, there'll be a pretty, you know, tight idea because we want to maximize our reimbursement from the state. Yeah, I know I got a lot of uh, positive feedback uh, over the last, with the last storm, mm -hmm. uh, this both with this weekend with the communication that we put out, manage expectations, this is what we're expecting, this is how we're planning to respond, this is what it might look like. Um, and I got mul quite a few people Good. saying they really appreciated that and, and also that it's sort of that's how it worked out, and you know, positive positive comments on the road crew's response and getting through that storm, Good. really pretty well. Good. Um, so I, I mean, I I agree that 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 type of communication is very much appreciated by people in town. Do you have a sense of where we need to put this? I mean, there's front porch forum, there's Facebook. We po in this case we posted around town also. Do we need to do all that every time? I think Front Porch Forum reaches a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, and I um, think of an initial, like with snowstorms, it's good to kind of plaster it like you mm -hmm. did, I think, pre-mud season, in advance of mud season, pragmatically, um, have safety and, you know, common sense messaging. Uh, but I don't know that you have to like all the time, but front porch is certainly an excellent tool and that gets people talking and talking with their neighbors. And mm -hmm. Did you wanna 
Susan? Yeah, I mean, we've done some of this this winter. It's been, it, it's kind of a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, to put out information, I want to make sure that, it, one, it's accurate. And that's the thing about snow and mud is it's hard to know what, what it's going to be like, you know, tomorrow. Um, but also that it's useful. So I don't want to just say, hey, the roads are going to be bad tomorrow. You know, it's, it's going to be a little more to it than that. So I am looking forward to, to getting past mud season. And mm -hmm. then I think the communication should get more predictable, right? We should say, here's the plan for this week, you know, and, you know, if it, if, as long as it's useful, I think people will appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Has there been any uh, contact with Sarah post, post creation of the flood flood response map and, yeah, and when, what it might look like if we tried to adopt something. When things got really bad and we had impassable roads in February, we were using that map. I don't know that anybody was going and looking at that, but we were we were trying to keep it update up to date. I want and I wonder fire department likes it. The, yeah, so the emergency response crews like it. Um, you know, I think to Anne's point, you know, is there is there a place so from my perspective, it's always like, how do we make it easy? Like, is there any way that we can automate that type of feedback so that, you know, any kind of input that's coming from the community gets like, you know, registered? It's like uh, if there's a form that's connected to the to the map uh, in a way that like that creates a heat map of problem areas um, so that, you know, if people know that that's a resource that they could go and just say, here's a bad spot. And then the more people who say that this is a bad spot, it, it, it turns red, um, and at the very least, it, it signifies that there's a bad spot there to, um, to kind of help schedule the road crews time, but also alert people who uh, might be traveling through that area that, that this has already happened. And, um, uh, so I'm, I'm kind of curious whether or not um, she has any thoughts about how, how that might be facilitated in kind of a turnkey turnkey way. Um, maybe it can't be done with that particular resource, but with the with the GIS resource that we're um, going to be activating soon, maybe maybe that's something Make that it, more interactive. Uh, it can be uh, more interactive. And then, you know, I think to Anne's point, the, if you have that resource, then um, then the front porch forum post just becomes a regular reminder to go to this place and you interact with the map and you don't have to get down into the nitty gritty of yeah. which road and when, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, and now mm -hmm. on that landing page, you could have a tentative schedule of priorities, you know, for the, for the road crew for, for that week to know that this is, this is what yeah. we're planning on addressing or, or whether that we're planning on responding to. Yeah. I mean, um, I, it's a good idea. I do think sometimes with citizen reports and I know I've seen that, the guys will be told you have to go out here. There's this terrible, terrible right. thing, and they get over there and they're like, "Oh my gosh, we just brought two dump trucks and an excavator over here, and it's totally not." Yeah, so you know, I, I think it's good to get citizen input, but then it's, they'll need to follow well, up to, to assess how, how yeah. Yeah. one person's bad is. You know, one person can be like, eh, "It's manageable," and half the road's missing. You know, and yeah. another person could have like a pothole and be like. I can't drive through it at all. Yeah. Hmm. So we did have some of that last year. Right, but but it is uh, it is helpful to yeah. get people's reports a heads up Definitely. of because you know, it's it's constantly changing. Like a sinkhole could just shift overnight, right? Yeah. We've had that. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's really helpful to get a heads <laughs> up. <laughs> 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 Here's right. the giant that would be an extra nice yeah. because then you can see. Yeah. So there is on the existing yeah. road road condition map, uh, there's a link to report, um, and it has a file upload. So you put in, that. yeah, um, I don't know. I presume what then happens is it goes in an email to yeah. Sarah. It's just a Google form. So right. like somebody still has to then like register that report right. and change the condition of the road. Right. But yeah. exactly, you know, I think that was kind of a crude first pass. I'd exactly. be curious to know whether or not um, Sarah or Jake has any yeah. like I, any thoughts about how to try to automate that with a more sophisticated resource because I'm sure it's out there. Um, yeah, I think it is. And I don't actually know 
how many, if any, reports? Do you know, I haven't ever asked her if people are using it at all. Mm. Uh, but we haven't done a lot of outreach about it. Right? Mm. Most people yeah. don't know it's there. No. But I do think it's a, a tool we can dial in and that could be a really useful tool in the future. We did link to it on the home page when we started yeah. in February. I don't know how many people clicked on it, but yeah. we put it there right in the front. I, did, I don't want to open a can of worms. <laughs> but I did just, since we'll be talking about it in a couple of weeks, and how bad, I mean, a mud season's largely been weather related, but there are some roads that, because we don't cut trees back, people want to have the overhanging trees so the sun doesn't get down, the roads are consistently more problematic. For the road crew, they definitely have a preference for adhering to the local road standards um, as set forth by the state of Vermont. As opposed to our back road standards. Yes, and just as a pragmatic, specific. and I would just that put it out there that pragmatically we have a very small crew for the number of miles comparatively to other town. Um, and for being able to do the best work they can. In Report unsafe for, whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't click on that, Jamie. <laughs> Um, but yeah. just financially and, and with the staff that we have and the capacity that we have, that we might need to be somewhat more pragmatic about how we want to approach roads. I, I, I've been thinking, I've thought about this a little bit also. And I know there is so much I, work into it. I, well, I don't think we should get rid of the back road standards. I would never advocate for that. But I think there are probably places we can identify or, you know, there might be five miles of road and maybe there's a couple of places on that road where maybe you don't want to have to strictly adhere to the standards because of the shade trees that are making it more difficult. And ideally, I would say we would do a study mm -hmm. in which we would try to identify all those spots. And would and people be willing to accept that those students. sections of roads would be in much worse conditions during certain times of the year? and? You know, because that's yeah. always going to be the poll is yeah. that then folks are like, but it's so terrible right here. Well, it's going to be th terrible there every year because it's it's not yeah. done in a way that's going to be conducive to it. Yeah, I'd like to see that done at some point, um, but that's for the future. Any more on this? I, I don't know that we're, we have, uh, yes, Barbara. I'm wondering if you want to come up with the next step related to the, the mapping and either ask Sarah to come meet with you guys at an upcoming meeting or have Kari contact her and go in consultation with her to find out what, what's the best way for us to keep this active and going. Well, that's what I was just gonna ask. <laughs> Would somebody like to talk about that? I just started a note to myself to write an email to her to have a conversation about it. Um, yeah, I mean, it yeah. seems like it seems like at some point there should be a a small group, whether it's you or her, you and her. I can. Happy if to you help. make it my action item, I can't imagine it's going to be in the top twenty-five. Right. <laughs> I, so right. Cop, copy me on it. Okay. Let's have an initial conversation. I, I I don't want to go as far as you know organizing explore. a task force or a committee, <laughs> right. but like you know, just explore. In part, I'd like bit. to kind of form some opinions yeah. around what, what is possible and what isn't before, before we get too down the weeds and yeah. mm -hmm. spinning up resources around what is or what isn't possible. But I think it's pretty important to get ahead of the conversation as much as possible. Yeah, I agree. Because I think it could tie into to what Anne's speaking of and like the, the management of where we apply resources and do what things relative to um, what portions of the standards, you know, what, what's practical, mm -hmm. what isn't practical. And I'd say it even goes even further than that. And like, where are we sinking resources where it's not practical? Um, and, and we need to think of something even different, um, even more different. Um, I, won't, I won't say the P word, but. Right. And with the, the changing of the map software that we're uh, working towards, Probably putting a lot of time and energy into the existing isn't 
practical and it may sort of kick the can naturally till that software is up and running and we're familiar with it um, and build on that platform versus one that we're moving away from it mm -hmm. right now. But we'll start that conversation. Okay, great. Anything else on that one? Um, you probably all noticed a lot of chatter on Front Porch Forum about the East Callis um, intersection oh my gosh. with the Marshfield Road. Um, and I just wanted to have a, a very quick conversation about that while we're on this. I pulled out this, this study, oh, I was going to say 2008, it's 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, the Town Hired Resource Systems Group, which uh, to look at that intersection and also Lightning Ridge Road and Route 14, mm -hmm. and at that time they came up with um, three options for the East Callis, uh, I mean, sorry, for the, uh, the one by the church and five options for the Lightning Ridge Road. They're all incredibly expensive and nothing was ever done as a result. At the time, the cost for the, east, the, um, the one in the village would have been about 800,000. Um, I can't even imagine what that would cost today. Yeah. It, it involved paving back street. But I'm wondering if we wanna do anything to further this discussion. Um, I don't think we personally are going to take this project on, but we could ask some people in East Callis who are interested in it if they would like to review some of the studies and yeah. make a recommendation. I think that's part of it, that intersection, but I, I think too just that's going to be a VTrans thing is, is trying to get the traffic slowed down coming up the hill. Um, because I know like the crew had said, if we get sidewalks that they're gonna have to clean them and they're gonna have to get a skidoo and they're gonna have to, so, but they wanna have a crosswalk, you know, and you can't really have a crosswalk if someone's whipping up the road 60 miles an hour. Um, but that's a, it's B-Trans's road, so I don't, I would have to, I can email um, Kevin Gadapi with B-Trans and ask what steps would be as far as 14, um, he's the, the head of the local V-Trans for our district. Well, and then, yeah, I mean, and, and that's that, that intersection is gonna have to be something that whether, you know, making one way only, or I think people coming off down, off the Marshfield Road around as well, a- But there seem to be other, like there, one person suggested mirrors, so you can see if somebody's coming whipping up oh, the road. Right. Somebody yeah. else suggested to me, is there a way you could, um, you know that light down there that, uh, that blinks the, the, the speed yes. at the bottom of the hill? If that could be connected somehow to a light at the intersection, that warns you when it starts blinking yellow or something, somebody is speeding up the hill. Don't pull out right now. Uh, th the, so there may be some, some creative ways the, that we don't know about. There was a stoplight on the main street through my college campus that was speed controlled. And if you approached there the you light go. going That's... under the speed limit, it would always be green. Uh -huh. And if you were speeding, it would turn red. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I've never seen it anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but something like that, because like, even the kids, like that you know, brilliant. walk, in, yeah, walk yeah. into the bus stop, they're almost getting clipped. It's just, it's... Yeah, there so, a, so uh, but I don't want to yeah. spend a lot of time yeah, talking about I'll ideas here. I'm just saying there may be some really good ideas out there that we just don't know about. And I wonder if we don't want to ask some of the East Callis residents to... to oh, work they on would it. totally do it. Yeah, would they do it? Oh, yeah. Um, but I mean, I'll, because it's feature, so let me find out what the parameters are as far as things that they can do. <laughs> okay. And then, you know, he can say not my... Party, you figure it out. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, people in the village would definitely be more than happy to sing their feet into that. Um, well, why don't you do a little scouting? And if uh, some scout. of them want to come and make a proposal to us, we can we can talk about it after mud season. Yeah, sure. they'll be happy to come on up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Any more on roads and conditions? Thank you. Um, Okay, we come to appointments of officials, boards, committees, and commissions. And Barbara has done an incredible amount of work here. Yeah, nice job, Barbara. Yeah, thank you. So I would, we have, um, I would like to suggest, you all have looked at this first chart called 
annual reappointments to be considered on March 25th. Just, Barbara's made several boxes here. These are all jobs um, that we appoint annually, and these people, most of them don't, they're volunteers. Some of them, most of these things require a little bit of training. You have to have some understanding. Um, Barbara has listed all the people who she's contacted who said they're willing to be reappointed, and I would suggest that we go ahead and reappoint everybody in this first box, and then we'll move on to the second box, and we'll talk about that one. Does that sound okay to everybody? Yes. Okay, would somebody move to reappoint everybody in box one? <laughs> so moved. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, uh, Rose, that's, it's called annual reappointments. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Donnie. Okay, the next one is called new animal reappointments. So these are um, the same sorts of jobs, but where uh, is, people have resigned. We do not, at the moment, have any formal applicants for animal control officer and, or constable, although I've, I've been in discussion with somebody, and we may have somebody soon, but we don't right now, so we can't do anything about that one. But I see Jamie has <clears throat> agreed to be a Curtis Pond Dam monitor, and I would no, like to... You might want to vet her. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to suggest that we not bother with the third one because <clears throat> if all goes well we will not be needing Curtis Pond Dam monitors pretty soon. Right. So we're just talking about for the next month or two, really. Um, and then of course we've already done Treasurer and you all understand, oh Rachel Seelig has agreed to be Curtis Pond Island oversight person. David Healy and Jared Thomas would like to switch positions so that David would be the alternate and Jared would become the delegate, which is the opposite of what they are now. And then we have two volunteers for the next two positions. Say that again about CV Fiber. CV Fiber, currently David Healy is the delegate. He would become the alternate. Currently, Jared Thomas is the yeah. alternate, and he would so become the delegate. So the way it's listed is correct. Is Just correct. ignore those arrows. Yeah. 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 OK. Okay, so I would take a motion to move those one, two, three, four, five, six positions that so I moved. just discussed. Okay. Seven. So moved. Yeah, I think there's seven. Yeah, it's seven, oh, including seven. treasurer, but we already. But we already did, did treasurer, treasurer okay. so I wasn't including that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're moving the six, six positions. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. thanks. Um, box three on the back of the page there is eliminating the um, positions of inspector of lumber and weigher of coal. Those positions are no longer required, and um, according to the the current office holders, they don't do anything. So I would accept a motion to eliminate those positions in the future. <laughs> Can we just say with regret? Yes. There's Thank you. Nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. With thanks to Greg for all his years of service. Well, and owning a coal company for 30 or 40 years. <laughs> but, um, I told him, I said, you're getting eliminated tonight. <laughs> and he said, just tell them they owe me back pay. <laughs> <laughs> so who made that motion to eliminate? Uh, Donnie. Donnie. Okay. Donnie. Thanks, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> I, was just trying, I was trying to get one in tonight. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Now we move on to boards and commissions and uh, committees. And I was thinking we could take those one at a time, starting with the Conservation Commission. Um, the Conservation Commission currently has nine seats. Two of those are vacant. Uh, Barbara, we have nobody applying for any of those. Is that right? We have one that uh, one nominee who has interested in conservation, but it's not before you tonight because the Conservation Commission wants to meet with that individual first and then make a recommendation to the select board as to whether to appoint that person or not. So That's one it. of those seats does have a nominee. It's just not before you tonight. It will come before you okay. theoretically 
after the next Conservation Commission meeting. Okay, in that case, I was going to suggest we move to eliminate those two positions, but why don't we just put that one aside then, till next time. Uh, Development Review Board has seven seats and three alternates. Um, Ryan, I, this is public now. This is public as of today. Okay, yes, that's right, he's informed the rest of the board. Ryan has tendered his resignation, so we have one open seat and two incumbents who need who uh, request reappointment plus one alternate position and since we have more applicants for these uh, or some applicants that we don't know I would like to suggest we put that one aside and go into executive session at the end of this uh, meeting to talk about the appointments to the DRB is that all right with everybody yes okay, uh, yeah. okay. we don't need to vote on that we'll just do that later Okay, historic preservation has nine seats. What question, Barbara? No, I'm, I'm just. I, I, I have I lost count here. I think you've got exactly the right number of people for yes. the right number of seats. Yes, but they're uh, applying for some of the same oh, seats. Okay, so, you're, so which which, which we seats just, you're we, have, we just need to go and talk about the whole okay, thing. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, historic preservation. We have nine seats. Three are vacant, and we have no applicants. I wonder if we would like to reduce the historic print. Oh, yes. So I ran that idea past them, and David Sheets is checking. There's a minimum requirement by the historic preservation uh, local, what's the local grant plate thing called? Local peak, the local uh, grants pro de, pro program. Oh, oh. And David hasn't gotten that answer back to me. So before you eliminate any, we have to make sure that they're still eligible for grant funding. So we have local government. Is that the name of it? CLG? Yeah. CLG, thank you. That's right. So don't do anything okay. yet. So we'll put that one aside <laughs> also until, until next time. So. Uh, Trails Committee. Planning. There, pardon me? Planning. Oh yes, Planning Commission. We have seven seats on the Planning Commission. One is vacant and we have two applicants for the one position. Is that? Have I got that? No, I'm, you no. got me confused the way you're doing this. So. <laughs> I know, but I think it makes more sense for us to take take them as we go. Uh, no, I'm sorry. There are two openings. I I just wrote this down wrong. Um, so I we, think we have the right number of people. Three. One ends 26, one ends 27, one ends 26. Yeah, so Melanie Keene is asking for reappointment. Uh, Rachel Seelig and Kathy Hensey have applied for the two openings. Right. And, and I got an email, a late arriving email from the Planning Commission that they both endorsed. They endorsed both of those nominations. Okay. So I think at this point I would take a motion to appoint those three people to the terms as listed in this. Um, document so for moved. the Planning Commission. A second. So, so what is it you're doing? You're just planning. doing the three planning? The three planning commission folks, yeah. Okay, so Jamie moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Th thanks. So um, it is um, Rachel and Rachel Seelig and Kathy, Kathy Hen Hensey. Okay. And who and Melanie was already on it. Yeah. Yes. Melanie's She's reappointed to her seat. Yeah. yeah. And we can look you can look at this. Yeah, I have it electronically. Okay. Okay, Trails Committee. There's ten seats. There's four uh, that are up for reappointment. All wish to be reappointed, and we have no other applicants. So I'll take a motion to appoint those four. So to the Trails Committee. It's Second. moved. Jamie seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I didn't get that one. We're well, reappointing. Because I was still typing the previous thing. Okay, so it's the four seats for the Trails Committee. The incumbents all wish to be reappointed. Jordan moved. Jamie seconded. Got it. Said that. Okay. Uh, next is Design Advisory Board. There's five seats, one open, no applicants. So I guess we just have to leave that one open for now. Yes. And as of today, we have two open seats because somebody else just resigned. Oh, that's right. <laughs> How many people? So that leaves, so that leaves three. That leaves three people. Yeah. 
And they've just gotten a more quasi-judicial um, role with the new zoning, where they are actually approving things. I think it would be good if we could find some more members. Um, do, are you aware of that? I don't think that no. the town office is not aware of that, of that, that whatever you just said. <laughs> what I just said. Under the new zoning, they actually now have the authority to say yes or no. And if the applicant, you know, if they say no, uh, we don't like your design in the historic district, they would have to appeal and go to the... Um, right. I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that the town office has not been notified of this new change. It's in the new zoning yeah, regs. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so it might be good to try to solicit some people for that. I would prefer not to eliminate seats at this point. Anybody? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think it'd get a little dicey moving yeah. less than five. Okay. Um, swim committee, three seats, one opening with no applicants. We got one? So I'm just wondering if the historic preservation, you don't want to go ahead and re reappoint the one incumbent who wants to be reappointed again? Oh, yes. Sorry, I missed that. Yes, please. Thank you for catching that, Barbara. Okay. Larry Bush would, would like to be reappointed. Would somebody please move that? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Swim Aye. committee. Yep, thanks. Swim committee, I guess there's not much we can do there. We're just going to keep trying to find somebody. Okay. Energy committee. We have had seven applicants now for folks to create an energy committee. I would like to suggest that we ask our energy coordinator, is that what he's called, to call a meeting of those seven people and ask them to come together and develop a mission statement and maybe a, a, a plan of what it is they might like to do and come back to us. There's a number of ways they could go. They could just be an advisory committee to the um, energy coordinator. We had that with the emergency management team for a while. They could be in a committee that we appoint. Um, they could be a smaller committee than all those seven people. But I would suggest that we let them get together <coughs> and talk about how, what the, thing, the way they would like to structure it. And I would ask Bill Powell, as our coordinator, to call a meeting of those people. And I'll open that up to discussion. Yeah, I, I like the idea of kind of vetting the organization of, of the group a little bit, or what the charge is going to be for a new, new committee. Um, uh, I, I definitely, th I'm, I'm glad that there's so much interest uh, in it, but uh, before we, you know, formally rubber stamp a new committee with seven very active uh, and, and, and enthusiastic members, it'd be good to have a better sense of like what the plan is and, and how it interacts with the other committees. Um, it, that's a pretty big group um, for, for a small town, but it, so do we, the need to form an ad hoc committee. Um, if we formalize them as a committee, they have to keep minutes on, on the meeting. Is that's that right. right? They have to comply with the open meeting law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, that's why I'd like them to discuss it yeah. and talk about what would work best. I have a proposal. And come back to us and just put it on Bill Powell for now to just call the committee, the group together. Yeah, I like that. I think this is your one of your best opportunities to give it some shape, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want, you, you could let them talk about their charter. But well, what was the origin of this? Was it the town plan? Well, the town energy committee is not required by statute. It was a suggestion because having a town energy committee can help us to uh, apply for grants and come up with projects. Um, the is this the Natural Re Vermont Natural Resources Council has put out something about town energy committees that describes what some what most of them do, and I would okay. suggest that they take a look at this and talk about it. I yeah. guess if I were to pass along specific feedback, I think to Takari's point is, um, uh, I would. It would be really great to see a committee like this really taking action to, to look to see what kind of monies are available and how they can how they can 
how certain initiatives that are identified within the town can be uh, can be reframed in a way that opens them up to uh, to other pools of funding um, that align with some of the initiatives of it, that was that was kind of brought to the board. Yeah, you know, that one of the wheels that were kind of spinning after the presentation that we got, plus seeing that one of the applicants had experience in quantifying carbon impact is like we could quantify the carbon impact of our road maintenance, which could put it in, in open up road maintenance or reconstruction or something to that effect um, uh, to pools of money relative to, you know, carbon mitigation, um, which I think is a really exciting thing. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and and certainly beneficial to the to the town. So explore grant opportunities either through new or existing initiatives. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. As opposed to saying, you know, here's four other new projects that we could get money for, you know, if if we do them now because I mean those are good to know about. But I I think it's really exciting to think about like how we might be able to form uh, committees like this one to look at. Look at what the initiatives and priorities of the town are, and how does each committee mm -hmm. take those initiatives and priorities and put them through their own lens and seek mm -hmm. seek funding um, relative to the pools that they're aware of. Barbara, did you want to yeah, add something? I to say that uh, Jan Olson was in the town office today. So, as the former planning commission chair, her primary wish is to make sure that it's a group who will work closely with the planning commission mm -hmm. on the energy section of the town plan yeah. Yeah. yes that's one of the things that's listed in here is something yeah. most of them do yeah. yeah and i will certainly pass this along although i'm sure bill is well aware of it um all right is that all right with everybody then i don't think we need a motion for that we'll just ask bill to call these people we'll put him in touch with them all um I guess you can make that happen, Barbara. Okay. Well, well, would you rather the messaging come from Oh, me? yeah, yeah, you're right. I should do that. The, yeah, the messaging could come from you. Okay. But I have everybody's contact information. I can get, give it to him when you tell me it's well, ready to you go. You copied me in all those emails, so I have it all. Oh, give, give it to Bill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I think... Uh, we'll go into executive session at the end of this meeting to talk about the DRB, but the rest are done for now. Okay. So there'll be follow up at a future select board meeting about the other open seats, or as the, as we have candidates, I guess. Hopefully, um, we have to at least do conservation commission and historic preservation at the next meeting. And then if we can get more candidates, that'd be great. Do you want to at least reappoint the one incumbent tonight on conservation? Or we did don't? that. You already did that? We put, that's Larry Bush. No. No, no you did. You take the historic preservation. Yeah, the incumbents above Larry were not. Oh, I'm sorry. On historic preservation. Oh, Walt. Okay. Walt okay. Ames, we did. Oh, okay. Conservation. Do you I missed that. Questions? Okay, thank you. So we'll take a motion to reappoint Walt Ames to historic preservation. So moved. No, Is moved and seconded. Right? Historic yeah. preservation. To conservation. Conservation. Uh, conservation. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> whatever. It's been long. We started at five. <laughs> Can I just go back and put that under when you were doing appointments? Sure. Yeah. sure. Um, it's going to be Walt Ames to Conservation Commission? Correct. Yes. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. And with that, are we done? Thank you, Barbara, for tracking it and catching it. Okay. Uh, okay, let's move on to the financial report. So the uh, standard reports I think that you get are in, in the Google folder, just focusing on the budget, the two budget ones, the general government and highway. Um, about 137,000 short on revenue between the two departments, uh, and we expect, a, you know, a certain amount in delinquent tax. Uh, still, about 40,000 is what Senator was estimating, and then beyond that, we'll have to see what the actual um, final tax bill from the school district is. If if it comes in below, which we 
expect it probably will. Um, that can be treated, the difference can be treated as revenue. But otherwise, I think we should probably expect that we'll come in below uh, budget for, for revenue this year. And, and we're not really sure, because neither Sandra and I were involved in the budgeting process last, last year, why that is exactly. Um, but um, be that as it may, on the, on the expense side, we're doing reasonably well. If you combine the two departments, we're, we're at about 74%. You know, and we're not quite three quarters of the way through the year, but we're through the expensive parts of the year. Um, <clears throat> the one area I highlighted was the gravel budget. So I just totaled it today. We're at about $111,000 in gravel expenses. We budgeted 82, and we're not done with gravel unless you say we're done with gravel or you want us to slow down or something like that. So. Um, you know, I think we're watching labor. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're watching all expenses at this point. We're, we're you know, going to be a lot more um, conscientious about can we bring this in on budget. Um, the labor situation with Peter leaving, I think we're going to see some savings there, obviously, until we get that position Well, filled. we've got Paul working now. Right? Well, only over the weekend. Only over the weekend? Yeah, Is that yeah, going to help with the just, trading? Paul Stecker, Tyler's father, came and helped out. It, as an independent contractor, got us through the work weekend. Really, really helpful. Um, but it, it's not. That's not. You know. So he, when we're not, trying to repair the mud, the roads when mud season's over, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a while. Yeah. Two and a half men. Mm -hmm. How many of them can run the grader, though? Can two of them run the grader? Well, you can't have two running the grader. Yep. Well, then it's going to be complicated. Be so yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can have two, but um, you know you're. Depending on if you need gravel, you need truck drivers as much as you need graders. So it's going to be, yeah, we're going to be reduced capacity. Um, for sure. Contract, uh, contract the truck driving as much as possible. That, that's a possibility. Yeah. Um, I guess just bottom line is we're really paying attention to cash at this point because, um, you know, we're still waiting on those FIBA reimbursements. Um, we do have that tax bill, the district tax bill is going to be a large, it's going to be the majority of the cash that we have left, and that comes in April. Thursday is the closing for the Municipal Climate Recovery Fund loan, so we should have the, that money fairly soon, and I can also start requ requisitioning dam bond funds for what we've already spent, or if we have an invoice in hand. Um, so, um, you know, there's things that we can do. But it may be that we'll need to draw on that line of credit too. That, you know, those are our options. That's our backstop. So it's it's starting to feel tight, but it, you know we we'll be okay. Um, we just it's just going to require some active monitoring. So what else? Any questions? We'll have a we'll have the March numbers at the next meeting is what I expect. So you'll get a even fuller picture in two weeks. So just a couple of picky things. Um, yeah. Recording fees. We were expecting twenty-one thousand, and um, twenty thousand, and we only got eight thousand. What? What is that? That's re that's land records. It is, but I I get the idea that lots of things are just being tossed in there, and we're being a little more particular about how we document where clerk funds go, and so some of the other buckets should be more full. I haven't gotten a chance to look at this report, but yeah, I. When I look back, it seems like I found some dog licenses in there in the past, and I found some hmm. reports and some marriage licenses. Like I found other things that I don't believe were from recording fees, um, okay. and I don't have great record keeping on what it's been in the past. Mm. The, that's probably those fees are correlated with how many real estate transactions and there it's are. Really right? real estate. So while interest rates are high, there's not been a lot of activity. Is that is that accurate? I I don't know. Again, I've only known this year. Yeah. I do know that half, probably, of our transactions, give or take, are uh, life estate deeds. So there's not a lot of property changing hands. It's a lot of people putting their money into trust and into life estate. So did we did we put twenty one thousand again in in our next budget? I, mean, I didn't think to look. I didn't know if we talked about revenue. No one, I was not asked. No, about that's before. right. Yeah. We didn't. That we just, yeah. So, I, um, I can think of about two thousand dollars just through ECCT uh, recording fees from last year. 
I remember twice when Mark Mahali wrote an over a thousand dollar check for recording of all these ECCT documents. Oh, I'm just, just, just broke when Jeremy yeah, was here. I'm curious when why Jeremy. it was projected that we were going to get so much and we're getting less than half of what yeah, was projected. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, mileage reimbursement projected to be we budgeted for 300 and it's 900 why is that so high what some happened some of that was Toby some of it was John some of it was oh so it was for the FEMA driving around for the FEMA I don't know necessarily that it was FEMA I just know that I got invoices from him for mileage reimbursement I know I was told that when I went to the conference in Fairly, I should put in my mileage, and so I did for that. So I think. So we just completely, whoever went on this budget, it really just. I, in the past, people haven't reported mileage. When I look back, I've only seen one or two people reporting any kind of mileage for anything. And so we should probably have a clearer policy yeah. on what sort of mileage we will reimburse for, because at the moment, we don't really have. Or a more realistic budget. Or a more realistic budget. Yeah. Okay. Um, those were just some things that jumped out at me. Yeah, it's hard to know not having been part of last year's budgeting process. Yeah. And I don't think yeah. there were good notes about what the assumptions were. I think this year we have we have better notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right. Anybody? Anything else? I I wanted to talk about gravel, and I don't know if I should mention it here because Kari spoke about gravel or. Later in go, go ahead, Rose. Mm -hmm. We'll do it. Get your gravel on. Well, I have gravel on my mind. Okay. <laughs> I wish I had a lot more gravel on my mind. <laughs> so, you know, we're all concerned about the mud. So, just quickly, right after dinner, before I came here, I went to the shelf and I pulled out 2003, 2006, and 2017. And I just made a little chart about what we had budgeted, what the actual was, and the proposed for gravel. So back in 2003, 2004, sand and gravel were lumped together. So back then, it was budgeted for 110, and then the proposed up to 2004, 2005 is 126. In 2017, I, like I said, I just randomly pulled them off the shelf. They separated out. They began to separate out gravel and sand. But if you total them together, the actual was 123,787. So you could say 124,000. And like I said, 04, 05, 03, it was 126. So they're kind of in the ballpark. The proposed for 2019, was 150,000 combined. It was 95,000 for gravel, 55 for sand. Mm. So that's 150. So then this year, well, let's go back to fiscal year 23, 80,000 for gravel. Actual spent over 92,000 in fiscal 23. Budgeted for this fiscal year now, 80,000. Bud budgeted for the new one that just got approved at town meeting day, 78. But if you add the sand in there, it's down to 117. So if you go back to 2003, 2004 and 5, 126, and now we're down to 117. Mm -hmm. So the cost of gravel is way up. You got the trucking and everything else involved. And I really believe we have been skimpy. We've been skimpy, Sounds we've been like, skimpy, yeah. we've been skimping. Yeah. We've been skimping for so many years. And you know we just can't do it anymore. My suggestion is overspend that gravel line item for as much as you can. Don't put up new guardrails. Don't put up new street signs. Don't paint the fences white. Don't, you know, we have to really invest, and we have to invest big time. We really do. And the sections of roads that were damaged and rebuilt with the flood, and every day I travel on the little place in Adamant that Donnie Mucherino fixed, 
and you got crappy crappy, you come to the Adamant Dam and it's beautiful and then you go to the Adamant store. That section of road that was totally washed out and totally rebuilt is just exquisite. And now just think of what an investment it would have been if all these years, like you said last meeting, we're going to do small sections, we're going to dig deep, and we're going to put it back right. But what if we had been doing that for the last 20 or 30 years? And so we really just, we need to get a handle on these dirt roads. I mean, the older we get, less tolerance for snow, less tolerance for mud. It's like, it's just really bad. It's really, you know, it's just like I came down um, Singleton Road, hit Peak and Brook, and now I'm thinking, okay, I'm here. I think I'm going home that way, you know. Um, anyway, I, I just wanted to say my two cents. The record show, and like I said, I just randomly went to the shelf. I have every town report since we moved here almost 40 years ago, and um, I, you know, it's just right there. We're just spending less, we're doing less, and we got to do more. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you highlighting 2003 amounts because I know when we were budgeting this time for this year, not exclusively, but in particular because we had two years of grant money to tap into, right. but that's 60000 additional money, that's going to augment the gravel and the, but it is, the costs have gone up a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, and really too with the, the yeah. just the, the size, yeah. I mean, what can we do with what we have? Yeah. Both yeah, materials and, and people. Yeah. So. yeah, and we just need, I mean, we just need to do it. And, you know, historically, if there's, you know, a hundred and, a hundred and in 2017, they budgeted 110. They only spent 81,557. Oh, well then we'll only budget 95,000 because we only spent 81. But you budgeted 110 and you should have spent $110,000 on gravel for our town. You know, so I think it's that kind of, you know, and I know that everybody does their best to manage it and there's no easy fix. Um, but I think that you are hearing from a lot of people that are just really tired of these roads, you know, and worried about car repairs. I already had mine in the shop last week. They couldn't hear the noise that, of course, I could hear. <laughs> uh, next month it goes again for the annual inspection, so maybe it'll be noisy again next month. But anyway, I just wanted to let you know that I got gravel on my mind. I tend to agree, and I think um, sand, you know, lumping them makes sense, and I yeah. think the same is true for sand. I yeah. um, think probably the single most common complaint I've heard about the roads over the last 10 years has been that we don't sand as thickly as towns around us. And, um, well, you've got to remind us of this. I think, Go ahead, Donnie. I think some of that is the type of sand we use. I've, I've actually spoke to a few different road foremans locally around us, and they're using more of a granite sand versus a a wash sand with stone that you mix in. So not only are you, you are putting granite sand down, which is basically what you're putting down when you put a type of plant mix down. So they're, they're going through their whole winter putting material down that's not going to affect them as much in the spring. So why are we making that choice and other towns making a different choice? Because the cost for us to travel to Graniteville is a lot more than I some see. towns that are around. So you're going to pay more in trucking, but in the on the other end, you're kind of preserving the road in the springtime. Springtime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Rowe, yeah. are you listening? Yeah. 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 No, I really appreciated that context. It, it's, it's, that's a little bit crazy that we're spending <laughs> less uh, 20 years later. Um, yeah. But it, it does strike me as um, it goes to sort of long-term planning again. Mm -hmm. And with the gravel, I can tell there's two components. There's what sections of roads are you gonna rebuild this year? And we should be absolutely planning multi-year, like, okay, it's mm -hmm. 
you know, hopefully we're going to get Kent, Kent Hill on the French mattress, yeah. maybe get that done this year. But, you know, what's next year? What's the, what's the year after that? There's also the mud season, which this year was wicked, right? It, it, it started in December <laughs> and we've been hauling gravel that was not planned for. There was no plan for yeah. that. Yeah. And it, it's not, it's never enough, you know, no. you dump it on some of these roads and you're like, where did it go? So you have to have both in the budget somehow mm -hmm. and, and plan yeah. accordingly. Well, and I think, but I, you know, to Donnie's point, I, I had the same conversation um, uh, somewhat indirectly uh, and, and feedback from um, the road commissioner for Berlin. And they're, they're putting down essentially sand, you know, what they're putting down on their dirt roads in the wintertime for traction is uh, is is basically creating a layer on the top that drains well because the quality of the material that they're putting down and um, and I, I think there's there's a lot to be said by you know said for choosing the higher quality material doing whatever you need to do to keep the trucking efficient um, contracting it out stockpiling it however we can yep. I mean it, it just it it seems like we, we have a lot of conversations around what our budget is and what our tolerance is for going over budget, but there's not a lot of conversation on saying like, okay, what's our long-term plan for making sure that we can, that, that we can have the material on hand that we want. And if we want to pay a premium for it, we can pay a premium for it. And we're going to offset that premium, um, you know, by contracting out the trucking or doing something else mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so that we're not just dumping we're not just dumping material into holes um, every every year and just having to dump more material into holes because we haven't we haven't made a plan for improving mm -hmm. the bed material. Yeah. I don't think we've really talked about it here, but McCullough d does plan on operating the pit behind the right. the, behind the garage again, mm -hmm. and they're going to get started this spring. And the, they have a permit for four more years of operation there, and. I, they definitely want to provide us with gravel, and they, I asked about sand, and they said they they would like to sell callus sand specifically just because it's so cost effective, and and the sand product that they make is gravel, and, I mean granite, and they and they you, I remember that because he said you, we have to add dark material to it, other because otherwise people will complain because they don't recognize it as a sanded road. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, let's see if they recognize it when there isn't any water sitting in it uh, come springtime. Yeah, I'd also, I'd also like to just kind of touch on what Rose said, and and thank you, Rose, for your compliment. I really appreciate that. And um, <laughs> I think the the thing that everybody needs to keep in mind with the material is the material goes up anywhere from fifty cents to a dollar every year, so it's constantly going up. Yeah. Okay. At a, at a very high rate. All right. Well, good discussion. We'll just have to remember this at budget time <clears throat> next year. Um, would it, I, it, I think we should move on to Curtis Pond Dam. Jamie, you want to update us about what's going on there? Yeah. Uh, we had a couple of things come together today. Um, we got final approval on our Army Corps of Engineer permit, which is Yay. the final um, state level construction permit we need before construction. Uh, so that's very exciting. That's been months and months and months of uh, work going into that. And it's very good to have that uh, done. Congratulations. Um, the final permit we need is just the Callis um, building permit, which John says is forthcoming uh, probably next week. Um, we are doing very well. I did not tally up final numbers today, but we're doing very well and on track with collecting uh, pledges and having new donations. You know, there's lots of people who pledged a thousand and end up sending 1500 or whatnot. Um, so fundraising feels like it's going very well. Um, the, the Larry Hebert, the contractor is away the last two weeks of March. So I haven't been in communication with him 
my understanding from where I left it from him with him two plus weeks ago when I spoke to him last was that we he and I would connect in the first week of April um, and start hammering out details of contract and um, get his final there's he's made some final tweaks with DNK so the number he gave us the nine 67 or something um, could change a, <clears throat> a little bit based on final tweaks that were part of the Army Corps of Engineer permit requirements. Um, DNK is also still doing final run throughs on a few things with dam safety. So there's a lot of pieces still in flux, but we anticipate. Um, probably by the mid-April, uh, maybe April 8th, if not April 8th, definitely the 22nd, um, we'll be ready to present a final contract and move forward. Um, I did get one piece of interesting information about two, well, now, three hours ago, right, is the... <laughs> Our, our first meeting tonight was starting, uh, so I haven't digested it, but there is some potential funding through a congressionally directed um, earmark that we had requested two years ago. It's been just sort of sitting there. Um, it's a lot of money, um, but we have no idea. I'll meet with them in the coming days. I have no idea how much, mm -hmm. like, it might be we approved it now and you can have it in two years, in which case it's no good to us. Um, I don't know the details, but it's potentially. Hmm. Um, which uh, Congress person is it? Sanders. Mm -hmm. It's $525,000. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, but again, I, I don't know yet if it will be actually useful yeah. to us. Yeah. It would have to filter its way through FEMA, which we all know can <laughs> be a lengthy process. <laughs> or exhausted. <laughs> right, right. Do you have a really good contact in Sanders' office that you can communicate with? Yeah, yeah. there's a, a contact who's worked with us on this particular issue who's been really helpful. Okay. Wonderful. Um, but can if you have one, I might. We double the size of the right. data. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we can pay the monitors. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, Which yeah. point that would be a very conflicted. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's most of what I have. It's all coming together and looking really promising. It's going to happen. The construction starts June 1st, um, <laughs> presuming everything goes as planned. Yeah. Well, um, that brings us then to this, the loan agreement. Yes. Um, which uh, was in your folders, and we have two documents we're looking at. One is the, the promissory note, be, which would be between the Curtis Pond Association and the Donee. And the other is something that Thomas Maloney drew up. Actually, Joe McLean did that. Oh, Joe did this, okay. Which um, would be an agreement uh, between us and the Doni. So the Doni would have to sign this, in which the Doni promises never, ever under any circumstances to go ask the town for money. That oh, it's yeah. a. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is, yeah, you, I hope you read that one carefully. That was <laughs> one. <laughs> so, um, and we need some action on this, right? Do, no, no? no. Not yet. I don't think not so. Yet. I think okay. that this will come. Basically, the way I see it happening is the loan and all the donations come into the CPA and the community center. Um, and then we'll tally it all together and do one big gift from the community center and one from the CPA. Um, and that. And the board will accept the gift. And the board gift. will accept the and, gift and, and ask sign for this to be signed. Time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just wait. But if you have any feedback about that, that would be right. good. Yeah. 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 It, it, it looked fine to me. Did anybody it's have pretty any? pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. And CPA 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> the vacuum cleaner. Oh, here it comes. The <laughs> CPA executive <laughs> board looked at it and didn't have any issues with it. Too. Okay. Anything else on Curtis Pond? All right. I think so. Tegan, you got anything to tell us tonight? So finishing up the last little election bits and then preparing for the next election. The next on one. Seven. And the one after that and the one after that. And the one in August and the one in November. But it's good because I, as Kari has mentioned a few times in his gig, it's nice to have the practice. Mm -hmm. So doing four elections this year means that <laughs> after this I'll feel fairly confident. I know what I'm doing going forward. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have the practice before I forget everything that happens. Okay. Um, Barbara and I got the wheels turning about the inclusion work group that we've got, that we put in the, um, the spreadsheet she had. So we emailed. She talked to individuals and found out who would be willing to serve right now and who was interested, and she passed that list on to me. So we're in the process of setting up a first meeting just to meet each other, to have a first conversation, talk about the potential purpose of the group, what we could be working on. Um, it's partially based on the fact that we have a declaration of inclusion and we would like to put something behind that instead of just having a document on the wall that says we're inclusive but actually looking at what that would mean for the town. Um, and also because the, we just had an ADA inspection of the town office and the town hall uh, and the person who did that had some recommendations that we could change to be more compliant and instead of, you know, Kari and me sitting down and trying to scrape together money from wherever we could, having a group that knows the ropes of disabilities and all sorts of other things. We, Barbara did a wonderful job of choosing folks who are familiar with all sorts of worlds of folks who are in minorities. And um, so I'm looking forward to that. I agreed to kind of help get them together the first time and take minutes and hopefully they'll, you know, take off and do their own thing. But I'm happy to continue participating. Barbara also expressed interest in participating as well. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, it's looking like maybe we're going to meet April 5th, Friday, April 5th in the morning. Um, so there's that. Um, Quick question. Yeah. Are you all going to be open to, I know we had had a conversation. Yes. I would I certainly want to have any group focusing on inclusion and diversity to reflect that. And it, the, the, these people who are involved are wonderful, fantastic people. They travel a lot, and they were not excited about doing things at night. They really wanted to do daytime things. That was an overwhelming response from them, is daytime works better than nighttime. Um, but I will certainly talk to Barbara and we'll figure out a way to put it out there so that other people may participate. And Zoom will always be an option um, for every meeting. That's kind of another thing that came up, just in emailing back and forth with everyone doing their travels and accessibility options, we thought that would be a good. Yeah, no daytime is good. I just, yeah. I know some folks like within the disability community and things that might and be if you in wanna, participating. If so. you want to send me names so I can reach out to specific people, if any of you want to send me names so I can reach out to specific people, feel free. Um, do you want to just a brief update on where we are with policies? Yes, yeah, so that was the other thing I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, not that you don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, the personnel policy has finally been vetted by the attorney and we've taken a last look at it and so it is in your folder or should be in your folder? It's in the April 8th folder. It's in the April, yeah, it's in the April 8th folder because it's, you know, there's a few pages to it if you, you're going to want to take a look at it and set aside some time. There are a few other policies that we've either wrapped up or we're close to wrapping up and so we're going to present all those to you as well. Some are financial, there are different ones. We've you know, been working as a group and with Sandra and with the LCT and with the attorney to try and figure out how we can best update some of these things. And then we thought we would put them before you kind of all in a bunch and you could, you know, look at them and process it. And that way we can warn it to the public as here are the things we're going to be talking about if you have opinions and you want to come. Um, <coughs> it's there. Is there anything else? Anyone else on the policy committee wanted to bring up in that regard? Yeah, the, we're trying to get the, the administrative policies, all the ones that the town office needs, cleared out, and then we're going to kind of move on to um, more stickier ones. Yeah, <laughs> in some cases, yeah, yeah. Uh, and ordinances. Did you mention that you updated the website, so there's now oh, an no, ordinance I, section? I updated the website, so there's a page that has the ordinances and the charter, because those are sort of overarching. Everyone in town might want to, it applies to everybody. And then there's a page for policies, but instead of just being a big old list, uh, 
it's it's just a little everything's a little more cohesive and more explained and easier to navigate. And if you all have any suggestions on how you want that even better, we can talk about those. This is just a first round of trying to make things more accessible for people. Thank you. Thanks, Tegan. Thanks, Carol. And Kari. Okay, so we talked about gravel. I think we're going to do that for <laughs> oh, now. Oh, that's glad that was there. <laughs> um, just wanted to say that we've had no applications for road crew members, and so starting to think about what else can we do. Mm -hmm. We've been asking around. We have three recommendations for incentives. One is, well, quantify the benefit portion of what we offer because that is often what gets you know people to mm -hmm. to do that kind of work. So specifically, the retirement benefit. What's that worth? The medical insurance is is really outstanding. So get more specific about that. That's easy, I can, I can do that in the next round of advertising. The second one is to offer to train for the CDL and the local roads program, which is a part of the AOT, actually offers the online, the, the study portion of it. Um, so we can essentially, I think, do that for free and then we can help the, uh, a person with their driving hours just by driving around with them, having someone on our crew drive around and show them their route in part. But, mm -hmm. um, so there's some cost to that, but it actually can be done fairly minimally. And um, I have to get a better understanding of that, but that's something that we may want to offer. I know, I know when we interviewed people in December, we had two applicants that, that didn't, one didn't have their CDL at all, and one didn't have it for um, the level that we needed it at. And the, the third thing is, is a signing bonus and something to consider. Um, um, I'm not recommending it now, but I think if, if this goes on for much longer, then we should, we should consider it. And perhaps another option would be paid advertising. We haven't done any paid advertising yet. Yeah. Yeah. And the Department of Labor ad just went up a couple days ago. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. Um, so that's that one. Just wanted to plant the, those seeds. The next uh, is a, is approval of the letter that's in the work packet. We have a uh, resident who is viol violating our right of way ordinance, and basically this letter would be a warning. Give them a period of time, and if they didn't come into compliance with the right of way ordinance, we would ask the sheriff to meet our road crew out at the site, and the road crew would take care of the obstructions, but the sheriff would be there for safety purposes and to let the resident know this shouldn't happen again. So a little, a little more oomph, because um, it didn't help when I called, it didn't help when the constable had a conversation, so we need someone with a little more authority. Um, and you know, it refers, the letter refers to fines, and that's something we could do, but what we want is compliance. That's really, and so trying to think through what's the, the best way to get that outcome. It seems like the logical next step. So this letter would be coming from the select board. Um, so that's a recommended action. Do you all have a chance to review it? Okay. Yeah. So um, what should we do? Uh, you, we don't actually need to sign it. We just need to approve it, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I can distribute it. Um, okay. So has got a, I, I have two suggestions oh. on that letter. One, it should be addressed to someone, shouldn't it? It is. It is. It, it says dear, but it's not addressed to. No. To, to, oh, maybe it's got updated. Today. Yeah, maybe it got updated. Oh, okay. Then also, I recommend that we send it a uh, certified mail return receipt requested, and that should be stated in the heading that it's being sent that way. All right. Okay. Uh, is that important? Yeah. Or you can it send a copy and a certified return receipt. Okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 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 okay. Sounds good. So, what do we need in the motion? Just to, to approve the letter and approve to send it by certified letter, yeah. mail? Okay. Would somebody like to move that? So moved. And Tulin moves it. Second. And Jordan seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Aye. And then the last thing is the ARPA fund. So we're we're right down. To, we're down to the last nine hundred and one dollars and nineteen cents, and it would be helpful to obligate the last of it now because the annual reporting cycle ends March 31st. So if we clear the books, we can do one last report and just be done with ARPA. So there's $901. Um, 
We did, in, it's, it's the expectation of the emergency management committee that they still had $621.78 to work with. Um, challenge, and, and Nick had asked about that recently because he would like to pay for incidental expenses associated with the antennas. Mm -hmm. There's one on this building and one on a, somewhere else. I can't remember. Center. Yeah. And, and so he didn't know the exact amount. The problem is, and I, I just called Sandra about this when I realized that w what you all um, dedicated the emergency management funds to previously, or the previous select board did this, was to an emergency management grant match, mm. and that has been zeroed out. So I don't think that's the vehicle here. And the town did create an emergency management reserve fund, but I don't think that that's actually in effect until July. Mm. So I was trying to strategize with Cinder, like where to send this money that is is a actual destination, because um, we don't have a we don't have an invoice, so so we're not actually obligating it unless it's going into a reserve fund or it's being used to pay for something specific. So I think our our recommendation is to. Um, send it to a reserve fund, and then we will we will figure it out in the budget to cover emergency management's remaining expenses associated with these antennas. So highway capital equipment, swim fund. Oh, what about moving the generator? Do we have funds for that? I don't know. Isn't that going to be more than? Pardon me. That was going to be more than nine hundred. Yeah, I it's like twenty one hundred dollars to move it, and I think you guys already approved that expenditure. We may have, but um, it's coming out of general fund, isn't it? That, that's part I don't know. That's what you're saying. There's a town hall reserve fund. Yeah, I was going to say since one of the buildings is town hall, yeah, I don't, it seems like it'd be the cleanest just to dedicate it to the town hall reserve fund. Um, since we know that there's a scope of work to be performed yep. relative to that, and then they just get built, both the scopes of both antenna projects get built, get built to that. Uh, that was one idea I had. The other was the CAI map mapping. Um, yep. So I, I mean, just pick something. It's all going to come from the same place anyway. So. I don't have an opinion. Yeah, what's what's easiest? Um, I like the town hall idea because then mm -hmm. we can Let's cover at least the antenna wiring for this building, mm -hmm. and and what's left over mm -hmm. goes to the generator. Okay. okay, so we'll take a motion then to move the remaining ARPA funds into the town hall reserve fund for the purpose of um, emergency management equipment. Or does it even have to be for a purpose of anything? It doesn't have to be for a purpose because it's going to the reserve to fund. To the reserve fund. It's, All right. It can't be spent for anything else. OK, so a uh, motion would be to m move that money into the town hall reserve fund. Uh, so moved. It's been moved. The whole 901 Second. Second. Yep. Jamie seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 OK. Is that it, Kari? That's it. Thank you. I see, uh, uh, oh, this is a different one. Okay, status of Shed v. Callis. Anything to report? Request for an executive session? Not a, no. Nothing to report at this point. Okay. Communication is re-engaged, so that's exciting. It's been pleasantly quiet. Well, yeah, just be some email chatter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, if there's nothing else, I'll take a motion to go into executive session under 1 VSA 313A3, the appointment of an employee or evaluation of a public officer. So moved. Okay. Second. And Anna okay. second. Yeah, are we I don't think we need to invite anybody else in. Well, Kari. 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 Yeah. Kari. Kari. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion. Jordan made the motion. Thank you. Thank you.